Hi, I'm Pam and I'm here to talk about video games. Today I was inspired to talk about a newer indie game that's just really nice. It's Eastshade. Eastshade was developed by Eastshade Studios and released in 2019. It's available on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. You play a traveling artist. Your mother has recently passed away, and her last wish was for you to go on a journey to paint her favorite places. You arrive, after a less than smooth voyage, just outside the town of Lindau. You pick up your easel and set off to look for inspiration. Eastshade is beautiful. You're constantly being treated to stunning landscapes, charming architecture, and natural wonders. In this world, there is a daily solar eclipse, so the land is usually bathed in sunrise or twilight colors. It's all very inviting, and the soundtrack adds to this feeling exponentially. The music brings each area to life in a way that's romantic and tinged with a feeling of adventure. Flute and string solos made me feel embraced, and the lighting almost made me feel the sun on my skin. It's a very warm and comforting environment. But what is Eastshade actually like to play? If I had to compare it to something, I'd say it's similar to Skyrim, but without any combat or leveling up of skills. Instead, you talk to people and help them with the quests they have for you, gather ingredients for simple crafting and brewing of teas, find ways to explore all of the island's lovely locations, and, of course, paint. One of the first quests is to help a local child with their own painting and show them, and myself, how to gather the materials needed to craft canvases. With a canvas on hand, you can paint anything you like. It works like a very simple photo mode. You find a view that inspires you, manually frame the part of it you want to capture, and with the press of a button, you've created art. Inspiration is very important and functions like a mana bar. When you discover a new place, a piece of poetry, or a story in a book, or drink a lovely cup of tea, your inspiration meter fills up, and you need to use some of it for each painting. This is such a simple but clever way of gamifying things, and making you consider what exactly you want to spend your energy on. The characters you'll meet are all anthropomorphic animals. Owls, apes, bears, and deer. Most of them are helpful and also looking for help. They may have a conflict with another character, need assistance in finding something or promoting their business, or be looking for love. Again, the quests and characters are just nice. They aren't perfect. Occasionally, people are deceptive or nosy, and you may have to take sides between two opposing viewpoints, but I always felt pretty good when I had finished a quest. When you get to the bigger city of Nava, another set of tasks opens up to you. Commissions. People will request a painting of a certain place or thing, and you have to find something out in the world that fits that description. This is a good way of making glowstones, which is the in-game currency, and of finding new places. One thing I really loved is that you can find the commissioned paintings you finished in people's houses or shops. It was always a nice surprise to be reunited with my work. Eastshade doesn't have the typical character advancement of gathering experience and leveling up. However, it does have a very satisfying sense of progression in the way you get to access more of the world. In the beginning, you're limited to the area around Lindau. It's not until you've finished some quests and gathered some glowstones that you can pay the toll to cross the bridge that leads to Nava and its surrounding areas. There are rivers you'll need to figure out how to cross and mountain ranges to surpass. Finding the way to access new areas and seeing what these places have in store always feels good. If you're like me and immediately look for a map in any game, rest assured you will get one, but not immediately. This is one of the few games I can say I enjoyed wandering around and finding my own way. 
There are useful paths between locations and many recognizable landmarks to orient yourself even if you go off the beaten path. I liked learning the lay of the land, and walking from place to place was so peaceful that I never minded when I ended up taking a longer route. Ways to speed up travel will open up to you. You'll be able to zip line between key locations, and there's a T that will let you fast travel. I didn't use this much until the very end of the game. While you're walking, you can also take time to go fishing. This is one of the few things in the game I wasn't crazy about, but I know fishing is a big draw for some. As much as I love and recommend Eastshade, I have to say it's not the most polished game. There are a number of bugs. Most bugs were the kind of things I've seen in a number of open world games, such as NPCs moving around erratically. Sometimes one wouldn't path properly, or I'd see it running around sideways. There were some audio issues, like hearing the sound of a waterfall as I approached it, and then having that sound effect persist even when I'd moved far away. The worst one for me was that some of the character models just didn't appear. They were there, if you approach them you'd see their dialogue prompt appear and could talk to them, but the character itself was invisible. My Eastshade character might have invented glitch art? Occasionally, one of my paintings would look like this. Finally, I'd suggest that if you get to a new area or have completed a number of things, just give the game a manual save every so often. There was one specific place when entering some ruins that crashed my game twice. The first time, I found out it had not auto-saved in quite a while. Based on what I've seen in the game's Steam forum, the PC version also has issues. The crash and loss of progress definitely wasn't fun, but for the most part, I was able to overlook the bugs because of how much joy the rest of the game brought me. It was so nice to play something that really felt different. It has a sense of exploration and discovery and lots of quests like an open-world RPG, but without the combat. It has the chill vibe of a walking simulator, but is much more engaging with lots of characters to talk to and decisions to make. It was really nice to play a game that immersed me in a new world for many hours without including any violence. In the real world, the last few months have been incredibly rough, and I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who could use a break. Even in gaming, the thing everyone's talking about right now is the incredibly murder-heavy The Last of Us 2. If that's not your jam, or if you're looking for a palate cleanser after you play it, Eastshade might be just what you're looking for. I haven't actually covered too many peaceful games, but if you're looking for something kind of similar, my top two games of 2019 are relatively combat-free. Eastshade would have found a place on that list if I had played it last year. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.